Hello everybody, I am Lup. I am an IoT educator from sunny Singapore. I used to teach IoT at a local school uh, for evening adult education. Nowadays, I write educational articles about Datex and publish them online. So my work in IoT education has kind of moved online. IoT gadgets today are becoming more sophisticated. Some of them have a touchscreen display, which explains why I'm so excited about today's presentation. Today, I shall talk about LVGL touchscreen apps in Nuttex and why it might be a good idea to build them in Zig. Typically, we build our touchscreen apps with LVGL. LVGL looks intimidating to Nuttex developers, but it doesn't have to be that way. In a while, we shall see that it is possible to make LVGL friendlier and safer when we write LVGL programs in Zig. Zig is a newer programming language that works well with C, and it looks suitable for creating LVGL touchscreen apps. We shall talk about wrapping the LVGL API with Zig and how it helps our developers. Since we are testing LVGL on a RISC-V device, like uh, this Pineal Stack BL604, I shall explain the challenges of running Natex on RISC-V. If you like to download the presentation slides, please head over to this link, lopyuan.github.io slash Natex. Uh, Dex, the letter L, not the digit 1. All my presentations, articles, and source code are available at that link. We shall test our LVGL app on this device, Pineal Stack BL604 with ST7789 LCD display and Buffalo Lab BL604 SOC inside. We are looking at the touch panel calibration of our touchscreen app. Pineal Stack has an I2C touch panel. We can see that the touch panel responds correctly in our LVGL app. Let us talk about LVGL. LVGL is a very popular graphical user interface library for microcontrollers. It works great for rendering text, graphics, buttons, and other interactive widgets. In fact, I first used LVGL on a PineTime smartwatch, then I ran it on PinePhone. LVGL is natively supported by Nutex. It works great with Nutex frame buffers, LCD devices, even touch input devices. There is a demo app bundled with Nutex, but be careful, um, the code is super verbose because it tries to create all kinds of LVGL widgets. For today, we shall look at a simple LVGL demo that creates a single text label. Here is our super simple uh, LVGL app. It doesn't do much, but the code is actually quite lengthy. Before we create our label, we need to fetch the active screen. Uh, this is how we do it. Then we create our label, passing the active screen as the parent widget. Now we set some properties on the label. Our label should wrap the text if it's too long, and our label will have uh, embedded colors. So it will show the text in multiple colors. But wait, we're not done yet. Uh, we align the text to the center of the label, and we are ready to set the text or label now. Um, this prints three words, hello, pindio, and stack, in red, green, and blue. Uh, that's because we inserted the color codes into the text. We set the width of the label in pixels. Finally, we align the label to the center of the screen. Let us flip back to the earlier code. Imagine a person writing LVGL code for the very first time. LVGL looks super intimidating, doesn't it? So much uh, repetition, right? LV everywhere, super long function names. What about safety? Can we be sure that these two functions won't return a null pointer? I would probably add assertion checks to be sure. So can we make LVGL coding simpler and safer? Maybe with the Zig programming language? 
So here is our proposition for today. Let us tweak the LVGL code so that it looks simpler and safer. With a little help from Zig, the newish programming language. Zig is so new that it hasn't quite reached version 1.0 yet. There are some limitations I shall explain in a while. Zig works well with C, so importing LVGL types and functions into Zig is a piece of cake. Zig will check for null pointers and other runtime problems that we commonly miss. So our LVGL app will actually become safer. Zig can infer missing types from our code. So there's less repetition and clutter in our code. Easier to focus. Zig will even automatically convert a program uh, from C to Zig. The converted code looks long and verbose though, but it's a good reference for studying the nuances between C and Zig. So you might be thinking, hey, I'm not familiar with Zig. You know what? I'm new to Zig too. We'll explain all the Zig features in this presentation. Let us take a peek at our Zig code. Uh, we no longer specify uh, the LVGL types, uh, like for screen and label. Zig infers the LVGL types for us, so our code looks less cluttered now. Notice that we use try uh, when calling the LVGL functions. This is how we handle errors in Zig. If any of these functions return an error, the execution stops and the error is returned to the caller. This is why we specify the return type with a bang, you know, exclamation mark or exclamation point. Uh, this means that this function might return an error. Nice, tidy way to handle errors. The rest of the code looks similar to C, except that we move, you know, label to the front. Um, so that it appears more object-like. We shall explain later how we did that. The plus plus here uh, is for string concatenation, uh, but it works only for constant strings at compile time, so it is safe. When we compare the C and the Zig versions of our LVGO app, yep, the Zig version uh, looks simpler, less repetition, less clutter. Yet, Zig is actually doing more behind the scenes, like watching out for null pointers, underflow, overflow, array out of bounds. If something goes wrong at runtime, Zig will halt our program with a panic message and show a helpful stack trace. Let us go deeper into Zig and understand how exactly it makes our program simpler and safer. First, we talk about C macros and declarations. To import them from C to Zig, we write a C import like this. For C macros, we change hex define uh, to at C define. So hex define latex becomes at C define latex. How did we get these defines? Uh, we'll come back to this. For C declarations, we change hex include to at C include, which we shall see in a while. How is it possible that Zig can understand C macros and declarations? That is because Zig calls the C lang compiler to pass C macros and declarations, which makes it really easy to import C functions into Zig. Remember we talked about changing hex include uh, to C include? Uh, this is how we do it. With this couple of lines of code, we have imported all the C header files that we need for Natex, LVGL, and our app. The first two lines look out of place, types of H and limits of H. I ran into some macro problems without these lines, so I added them. Could be a problem with C lang. That's all for importing C functions into Zig. No wrappers needed. This is how we call the functions imported into Zig. 
if we compare the Z code at right with the original C code at left, they look highly similar because we haven't read uh, the LVGR functions yet. We'll talk more about this in a while. Do you see the uh, dot question mark at the end of the line? Uh, Zig will verify that the result is not null. If these functions return a null pointer, Zig will stop our program with a panic message and show a helpful stack trace. To compile our Zig code for the RISC V BL604 SOC, we run this command. Then we link the object file with Nutex. How did we get these compiler options? We copied them from the text, as observed with a make trace. This is what we observe with the text and make trace. Uh, here are the options uh, that we copied from GCC uh, to the Z compiler. Now, what about the rest of the GCC options, like the text? and debug uh, arc risk 5 But we copied these C macros to our ZIG program as C defines, since the ZIG compiler won't accept these options. Earlier we saw this ZIG target and CPU when compiling our app for BL604. What is baseline RV minus D. Well, BL604 is officially designated in RISC V as RV32 IMACF, which means that BL604 has all these goodies IMACF, including hardware floating point, single precision. Now, this is almost similar to baseline RV32, which is RV32 IMAC FD. The D here uh, means double precision floating point. Now, since we don't have double precision floating point, we subtract the D, right? Uh, remove it, um, but keep the single precision floating point. That's why baseline RV32 minus D is equivalent to RV. 32 IMAC F. Things get a little quirky for Zig on RISC V BL602 since Zig hasn't officially reached version 1.0 yet. The binary produced by Zig compiler says that it's using software floating point ABI, ABI for application binary interface. But we told Zig compiler to use hardware floating point. Um, the binary produced by Zig won't link with that text because the rest of the binaries are hardware floating point. This is a terrible hack that modifies the ELF header from soft float to hard float. Our Zig binary will link successfully with that text after this hack. We tested the Zig act on Pineal Stack BL604 by Pine64. This gadget is based on the BL602 RISC V SOC by Buffalo Lab. Check out my presentation on Nutex on a RISC V IoT gadget, Pineal Stack BL604. The app begins with a touch panel calibration, which still runs in C because we haven't finished the conversion to Zig. Then it calls our Zig code to render the line like this. We see the text label with the color text in red, green, and blue. So yeah, our LVGO app runs correctly on Pineo Stack BL604. This is a demo of our LVGL touchscreen app in Zig running on Pineo Stack BL604, which has an onboard ST7789 LCD display and an I2C touch panel. We have compiled the Zig touchscreen app into the Nutex firmware. Pineal Stack is now booting the Nutex firmware. The screen turns pink when Nutex boots. Uname says that this is a recent build. 
LaTeX version 10.4.0. Let us check the LaTeX devices. We see the LCD device, LCD0, that is connected to the ST7789 LCD display. Our touchscreen app will render graphics to that LCD device. And we see the touch input device, input 0, that is connected to the CST816S touch panel. Our touchscreen app will read touch input from that device. Let us run the touchscreen app. Remember, this is a Zig app that we have compiled and linked into NutX, though it still contains some C code. The touchscreen app begins with the touch panel calibration. We need to tap all four corners of the screen to complete the calibration. This is coded in C because we haven't converted the calibration code to Z yet. The screen refresh looks laggy. Hopefully this will be fixed when SPI DMA has been implemented for BL604. When we tap the screen, the touch input driver captures the touch coordinates and passes them to our app. After computing the calibration, our app renders a simple text label, Hello, Pineo, Stack. Remember the Z code we saw earlier? This is the output from our Z code. And that was a demo of our LVGL touchscreen app in Z on Pineo Stack BL604. Let us head back to our Z code. When we last saw our Z code, uh, we were calling the LVGL API that we have imported from C, which looks long and cumbersome like this. Can we wrap the LVGL API with Zig and make it object-based so that it looks more friendly? This is what we mean. Uh, we move the LVGL uh, widget to the front, right? Like these. Um, and we shorten the function names from this uh, to this. So the code looks more sensible. We do this by wrapping the LVGL API with Zig. Inside our LVGL wrapper, uh, we call the LVGL API, like getting the active screen. When the LVGL returns the active screen, we wrap it inside a Zig object, like this. This Zig object will be used by our LVGL app to perform LVGL operations. We need to do this wrapping for every kind of LVGL widget, buttons, labels, text areas, and so on. It will be tedious, but hopefully worth the effort. By the way, this funny notation with the screen and bar as bar, uh, this means that if screen is not null, then S becomes uh, the value of screen. But if screen is null, then we do the else clause. Remember that we use the active screen to create a text label. We need to wrap this as well. Inside our wrapper, uh, we call LVGL to create a label. And we return it wrapped as a zig label. Our label allows setting of text and properties. This is how we define the functions for our zig label. Um, these functions will forward the calls to the LVGL API. Right? Uh, it looks highly mechanical. Maybe we can automate this so we don't need to write out every single wrapper by hand. We shall come back to this. After wrapping our LVGL API with Zig, we get this data tidier version of our LVGL app that we saw at the start of our presentation. This code runs okay and renders the label correctly. But if we try to do anything else in LVGL, our wrapper might not support it because our wrapper is incomplete. To build a complete LVGL wrapper, we might need some automation. 
Zig compiler can generate a type info JSON that describes all the types and functions imported from LVGL. We could scan through the type info JSON and auto generate the LVGL wrapper. However, we might have a problem designing the LVGL wrapper because LVGL is actually object oriented, it supports rigid inheritance. Zig isn't an object oriented language. So mapping LVGL widgets to ZIG can get challenging. Now that we have a simpler, friendlier way uh, for our LVGL developer to build touchscreen apps, let's talk about safety. ZIG performs safety checks at runtime. If we try to dereference a null pointer, or if our computation causes an underflow or overflow, if we try to access an array beyond its bounds, all these will trigger a zig panic, uh, followed by a helpful stack trace, which is really helpful for tracking down the bug. Zig isn't memory safe yet. It doesn't have a borrow checker for compile time checking, so zig might have problems tracking our heat memory, uh, problems like use after free. Uh, see this article uh, for the details. Some of us might wonder, if Zig is really so great, why isn't everyone using it yet? Well, Zig is still new. It hasn't reached version 1.0 yet. Some things are a little rough. This is one of the quirks that we have to live with for now. LVGL defines this struct that represents color. This is RGB 565 format. 5 bits for blue, 6 bits for green, 5 bits for red, total 16 bits. Notice that it's implemented with uh, bit fields. Sadly, this is a no-no for Zig. Zig will refuse to import struct types with bit fields. Instead, it becomes an opaque type in Zig. We can pass pointers to it, but we can't create instances of it, and we can't access the fields inside. The workaround is to access the bit fields in C, and Zig will have to pass the struct pointers to C. This complicates some widgets in LVGL, like the canvas widget, which uses a uh, color type. Since we're running Natex on RISC V, let me share some thoughts on the RISC V ecosystem and how it affects Natex. Sadly, the RISC V ecosystem today is severely fragmented. RISC-V microcontrollers like BL602, ESP32, GD32V, FE310 all have vastly different internals. Memory layout is completely different. How we handle interrupts is also different. It's not easy to jump from one platform to another. Now, Buffalo Lab has two families of RISC-V SOCs, BL602 that we've seen earlier and um, BL702 like this photo uh, that we see here. Yet, BL702 is so different from BL602 that Nutex won't run on BL702, right? Um, so it gets rather frustrating. I understand that we might be creating a unified make file for Nutex that will support C, Zig, and Brust. Now, this might be challenging for RISC 5 We've seen earlier that RISC 5 needs a special target for Zig, but for Rust, we actually need to provide a custom target JSON that will support hardware floating point on RISC 5 like for BL602. There's one last thing that makes BL602 uh, frustratingly different from other microcontrollers, and it causes problems with a touch input for our LVGL app. You know when we talk to I2C devices on I2C bus, we need to send the register ID inside the I2C request. Well, BL602 calls this the I2C sub address, and it mandates that we send the I2C sub address through a dedicated hardware register. But Natex assumes that I2C sub address is part of the I2C data. So right now, Nutex extracts the I2C sub address from the I2C data. Under some conditions, it doesn't quite work correctly.
perhaps we might need to extend the Nutex I2C interface to support I2C sub address as a separate parameter. Since ZIG has proven to work so well on Nutex, we plan to do more experiments with ZIG on Nutex. We are now porting Nutex to Pinephone, uh, this mobile phone based on Allwainer A64 SOC. Why port Nutex to Pinephone? Well, I think it's highly educational to document the process of running Nutex on a real phone, something that we might use every single day. Uh, someday, we might even use Pinephone to teach our students about the internals of Nutex. The progress has been great. Nutex now boots OK on Pinephone, all the way to the NSH shell, as we see in the photo here. We have plenty of Nutex drivers and apps to build for Pinephone. We need a quick and safe way to prototype these drivers and apps on Pinephone. Zig might be super interesting for doing this. Check out the progress uh, here. If you're keen to learn Zig, here are some helpful links. Zig Learn is probably the best tutorial for Zig. The Zig language reference is a readable, concise guide for the entire Zig language, which isn't really that big. Many of the Zig features are implemented in the Zig standard library, so we should refer to the official documentation. Zig News has plenty of insightful articles. The Zig community on Reddit has friendly folks who might be able to help if we have a question about Zig. If we need more information about compiling Zig apps and Zig method programming, check out these guides. Also check out my presentations. The first presentation is on Zig programming for NetX sensors. We explain the compile time features in Zig and how we use them to read NetX sensors. The second presentation is about Pineal Stack BL604, the new RISC-V IoT gadget and how we plan to build Zig apps uh, for the device. I've been using Zig for the past five months. Uh, before that, I've been using Rust for a couple of years. To wrap up today's presentation, I would like to share my thoughts on Zig. Zig works surprisingly well with NetX. Zig can call NetX functions without any bindings or wrappers. Well, unless we intend to redesign the API, which we did for LVGL today. Zig lets us import Nutex types and functions directly into our Zig programs. This is a big plus. I just hope that Zig will release version 1.0 soon uh, so that Zig will support structs with bit views. Zig's safety checks at runtime are helpful. They save me the hassle of writing assertion checks everywhere in my C code. The runtime safety checks will be especially helpful for people coding Nutex apps for the very first time. The safety checks are good for education. If I ever need to teach programming in school, I will definitely teach Zig. Unlike C, Zig doesn't have macros, but Zig allows us to write code that will be executed at compile time, and it works as well as C macros. Check out the details in my presentation of visual programming with Nutex sensors. In this presentation, we have covered many topics. Everything that I've covered is explained in these articles. Our touchscreen app in Zig, how Zig runs on RISC-V BL602 and Pineal Stack BL604. If you would like to download the presentation slides, please head over to this link, lobyuan.github.io slash nutx. That's the letter L, not the digit one. All my presentations, articles, and source code are available at the link. The first article from the previous slide has plenty more details on LVGL and Zig that we have omitted from this presentation, like how we worked around Zig's inability to import structs with bit fields, and how 
we ran a ZIG compiler to auto-translate an LVGL app from C to ZIG. The fixes that we made to handle opaque types in the LVGL input driver and color type, plus a walkthrough of the type info JSON generated by the ZIG compiler and how we might use it to create the LVGL wrapper in ZIG. The details are all inside. Please check out the article. LVGL looks a little less intimidating to Nutex developers now that we have ZIG. ZIG is now supported on Nutex and it's a wonderful thing because ZIG will helpfully do all kinds of safety checks at runtime. I hope Nutex developers will find it a lot more productive to code in ZIG. Since we are now porting Nutex to Pinephone, let us create more drivers and apps in ZIG. Thank you.